Yo, it's me, Ari Dossett. I'm your anthropology ontologist. Again, over Karma's t-shirt by Roger Ware, our British brother from Rwanda. Please support him. Buy his shirts and his hoodies. He's also releasing music to glorify that my father. Yo, Roger, keep on going, man. And all of you, please buy my novels too. I have more coming out soon. Thank you very much. But okay, values. Without the same or similar values, you cannot accomplish long-term goals. You can accomplish short-term goals with people who have different values than yours. For example, you may be okay uh, with, let's say, teenagers going out to, uh, to nightclubs, all of that. In many countries, forbidden, by the way, but some countries from age 16 can go. But anyway, you may be okay with that. Someone else thinks mm, nightclubs are a dangerous place. We need to shield uh, young people as much as possible. Okay, it's a difference in values. The other one values is uh, just let the young children do whatever they want to do, let the young people do whatever the people want to do. And you over here, you think about the long longevity of the community, make sure everyone remains healthy. So you want to shield off young people from as much, you want to shield them off from as much destructive influence as possible. Different values, but you can still uh, do a job together at work, whether it's construction, whether you work at the tax office, or whether uh, you have to arrange a wedding, uh, you've, uh, you have to prepare things for a wedding. So short-term goals you can do together with people who have different values. Maybe someone is lenient towards sodomy. And you're thinking, I have nothing against sodomites, but hey, I'm all about God's design, male and female. You're firm on that. Now, different values. You can still do small things together, but you cannot get along long term. Okay? So I want you to remember getting along with other people cannot be unconditional. If you don't have the same or similar values, you cannot have long term. You cannot, you cannot be around them long term. And you cannot go far with them. And when it comes to believers, listen, we should not be unequally yoked. Whether it's unequally yoked with unbelievers or unequally yoked with fellow believers. If someone is an unbeliever, or someone can even be a believer, but they're undelivered, you cannot have full engagement with them. You cannot. Because they are in escapism. You are about living in the here and now. If they want to live in the here and now, and they still need to be delivered from some dysfunction, that would be different. At least they want to have similar values as you. But if people are all about escaping and being left alone, and you are about doing the will of them and father in the here and now, how do you think you can get along together long term? You cannot. You can still be on friendly, friendly terms with them. You can still wish each other well. You can still look off one another, but you cannot be involved long term. So when it comes to you, stop, when it comes to you, building uh, your legacy, when it comes to you influencing your community, when it comes to you um, shaping your community, when it comes to long-term goals you, you have, long-term goals you have with other people, you should all have the same values or similar values. And understand the following here. Many believers fell for the following deception. And that's the deception that we agree to disagree. You can disagree on superficial things. You like Starbucks, I don't. You prefer ketchup, I prefer cur curry sauce. Or you're all into, uh, let's say, let's say we both left an Japanese, Japanese animation, but you're more into Pokemon and I'm more into Dragon Ball Z. You can disagree about such stuff. But you cannot disagree when it comes to the safety and well-being of the community. If people don't have firm agreements about the safety and well-being of the community, then long-term fault with them is out of the question. It's not even an option. You should even think about it. Too many believers together get nothing done. Yes, there are believers who together don't get anything done. And you may think, but hold on a minute, aren't they, aren't they all believers? Don't they all have the same Holy Spirit? Are they serving the same Heavenly Father? Are they praying to the same God? Don't they have the same Savior? How come they don't get anything done then? 
because one believer is undelivered still into into the escape mode and the other believer is prospering you cannot be struggling and prospering at the same time if you're if you're prospering it may appear like you're struggling because you have difficulties coming against you but you're prospering you're expanding but you cannot be prospering and struggling at the same time if one believer is struggling and the other believer is, is prospering, it's because one believer obeys the word, this one is prospering, and the one who keeps struggling over and over again is still in escapism. Simple as that. Now, all believers will go through retaliation. But it's meant for you to overcome retaliation, and at some point society has no option but to work in your favor, whether you want it or not. They may feel a certain bad way about you, but that way they feel about you will harm them and devour them and shut them down. And it will kill them, them slowly, not you. This is how it should be for the believer. If a believer continues to have struggle after struggle, year in, year out, uh, something's wrong with that believer, simple as that. But then you have church pamper them, tell them, well, uh, we are going to heaven soon, or soon you have the rapture. You have all these bullshit fairy tales from demons they teach in church. And a lot of believers are pampered by those fairy tales. Well, you don't get any fairy tales over here. If you are in continuous struggle as a believer, I'm sorry, something's wrong. The only time you struggle is in the beginning of your faith walk, when you still need to be delivered. Once you are delivered, you should be prospering, going from faith to faith, glory to glory. To many of you are not going from faith to faith, glory to glory. To many of you are going from misery to misery, sadness to sadness, depression to depression, misfortune to misfortune, victimization to victimization. Why is that? Because you're not in agreement with Christ. You're not operating in the power. Simple as that. Because you're holding on to some escapism that God told you to let go of. Listen. We have to watch out which fellow believers we get involved with. If a fellow believer is not in agreement with Christ, our Savior, no full engagement. We treat them the same as unbelievers. Partial involvement. If they are in agreement with Christ, then we should be fully engaged with them. Simple as that. Simple as that. Now look, you can have witches and warlocks in the world coming together. One may be from Buddhism, other may be from Hinduism, other may be from some Arab religion, other may be from some Hispanic indigenous religion. You have all these pagans of different religions come together and they get things done. Why? Because they are of the same values. They are of the same values and they realize that without this paranormal charge, we, we, it won't work. So they're serious about what they're doing and they're of one accord and they get things done. And, but now, you have believers. Some are delivered, some are not. And those who aren't delivered are hindering those who are delivered to get things done. So then it appears like pagans are more successful and more reliable than believers. Even though pagans have side effects and sorrows that haunt them, so, in the long run, this, uh, the things will uh, work against them. Nevertheless, on the short term, pagans get things done. So, if the world sees pagans getting things done with the, with the aid of demonic excrement on the energy fields, that's what the charms are. But then you see believers with the presence of God in them not getting anything done, I'm sorry, that's an embarrassment. That's an embarrassment to the Heavenly Father and it's an embarrassment to the body of Christ. Why? Are we continuing like this? Aren't we told in the New Testament that we should keep believers who, who, who remain in darkness at a distance? We shouldn't fellowship with them, nor, not, not even visit their house or eat with them? Why aren't we practicing that? Why do you have this church bullshit saying, oh, don't judge, don't judge, just love? No, no, no. We walk in love towards everyone, but we cannot walk in love with everyone, not even with some fellow believers. So we need to judge accordingly and judge properly. Amen? So, judge accordingly and judge properly. That's what the body of Christ needs more than ever before. So unlearn those church fairy tales that you were raised with or that people taught you and agree with Christ himself. Was well, it for now. Keep on agreeing with Christ and be at peace.